House hacking is the most financially advantageous way to own a home. House hacking takes your biggest expense, your housing, and turns it into your best investment vehicle. Not only does house hacking lower your cost of living while somebody else pays off your mortgage, but it can also supercharge your net worth and create an additional source of income. Look, if you're new to the channel, the TLDR here is house hacking is freaking genius. But there's a catch in that house hacking kinda sucks, right? I mean, you don't wanna be a landlord. You don't wanna continue living in an apartment. And what's a duplex or a triplex or fourplex except a really small apartment building? You don't wanna live next door to tenants or worse, get a call in the middle of the night to fix their toilet or worse, have to evict them. And that's what we're talking about in today's video. All the reasons not to house hack. Because there are reasons, lack of privacy, being a landlord, etc., and you have to weigh those against the financial benefits. The problem is that most potential house hackers don't know a lot of house hackers. So it's difficult to weigh the financial benefits against a collection of compromises that you might not fully comprehend. Sure, you probably have an uncle who will tell you that tenants aren't worth the headache, but unless that uncle is giving you advice from his yacht, I wouldn't take it. So today, I'm discussing the trade-offs, the compromises you will encounter as a house hacker, and I'm using my experiences and those of my clients as real-world examples. My name's John Schwartz, and I'm a real estate investor, realtor, and house hacker in Los Angeles, California. And if you're considering house hacking but still feel a little uncomfortable about it, this is the video you should watch to determine if your apprehensions are warranted. So first, a quick definition of house hacking and then we'll get into the reasons not to house hack. House hacking is buying more home than you need and renting out the space you don't live in. You can house hack any property from a two bedroom condo to a four bedroom house to a duplex, a triplex, or even a fourplex. The rental income you generate, whether through long-term tenants or short Airbnb stays, will reduce, if not eliminate, your cost of living while you still enjoy all the long-term wealth-building benefits of ownership, namely principal paydown and appreciation. Now let's talk about the reasons not to house hack, starting with where you probably are right now, at the very beginning of the process. Reason number one not to house hack. Buying a multifamily property is really complicated. This is exactly what I thought before I bought my first home in 2009, and I wish I knew then what I know now. The fact is, buying a multifamily property is no more complicated than buying a house. Here's why. Properties with one to four units, so we're talking about individual condos, houses, duplexes, triplexes, and fourplexes, are all lumped together in a category called residential real estate. These property types are all financed by the same loan products, insured by the same insurance products, bought and sold by the same real estate agents, warrantied by the same home warranty companies, even listed together on Redfin and Zillow. So buying a duplex or a triplex or a fourplex is functionally exactly like buying a house. In fact, I find it easier to buy a multifamily property without an HOA than to buy a condo with an HOA. What can get more complicated though is the numbers. When you buy traditionally, you have a monthly payment called a pity payment, which is an acronym for principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. These are the items you must pay every month so as not to risk foreclosure. When you house hack, you also have rental income as well as some additional expenses to factor into the equation. I've created a spreadsheet, the house hack calculator, to make this analysis as straightforward as possible. And you can download your own free copy at www.house hack.la backslash calculator. The link is also in the description below. And if you're buying a property with the intent to house hack, whether it's a single family or multifamily property, it behooves you to work with an agent who not only understands your goals and criteria, but is equipped to help you meet them. If you're trying to find the right agent in your market, reach out to me at john at hhla.co and I can help. Okay, reason number two not to house hack, the lack of privacy. So I have some good news and bad news for you here. Let's start with the bad. By definition, house hacking means sharing at least part of your property with somebody else, and there's no way of getting around that. You can't collect rental income without renting something to somebody, right? The good news is that you're in control of determining the level of privacy you require. For example, my wife and I wanted to live in a specific neighborhood, Hancock Park, that happens to have a lot of upstairs, downstairs duplexes. We took the upstairs and put our tenants downstairs. And yes, we occasionally hear a loud movie scene or a burst of laughter emanating from our floors, but we're okay with that compromise. And honestly, I hear my tenants about as much as I used to hear my neighbors when I lived in a single family home elsewhere in Los Angeles. If upstairs, downstairs feels a little too intimate, I recommend a side-by-side -side duplex, like my client Scott and Ingrid bought in the neighborhood of West Adams. You and your tenants will share less surface space and walls are easily reinforced for soundproofing 
if need be. Or, like my client Damien, go one step further and pursue cottage apartments. We found this gorgeous triplex in Echo Park comprised of three separate bungalows. Damien lives in a standalone two bed, two bath house with gorgeous views over Los Angeles. And oh yeah, there are two other little houses on his property whose occupants happen to pay his mortgage. The possibilities are really only limited by the housing stock available in your market. I recently looked at this triplex, which is actually a very private single family home with an upstairs downstairs duplex in the rear. Or this house plus ADU, which has entrances for the two living spaces on opposite ends of the property. And notice that the separation between the house and the ADU is on par with the separation between the neighboring houses. When your neighbor is your own ADU, you get to choose your neighbor. The point is, you decide how much privacy you need in your house hack, and then you can explore your market to see what options exist that meet your requirements. Moving on, reason number three not to house. Hack. Being a landlord is a giant pain in the ass. We'll talk about tenants in a second, but with this objection, I'm really referring to landlord-specific work, like listing an apartment for rent, screening tenants, collecting rent payments, tracking expenses, etc. A decade ago, I would have conceded that, yes, this is a lot to take on. But in the last few years, we've seen a ton of all-in-one online tools that make landlording pretty easy. You've got Rent Ready, Avail, Hemlane, Stessa, Rent Tech Direct, Tenant Cloud. The market's actually pretty saturated with tech startups that want to make your life as a landlord easier for little or no cost. My favorite tool, and this isn't a plug, I don't have an affiliate relationship here, is apartments.com. It's free and it does everything. Apartments.com hosts your rental ad, organizes the responses, has an online application for prospective tenants, allows prospective tenants to order their own credit check for you, and once you've chosen a tenant, allows you to set up recurring rent payments online. Remember Damien and his beautiful triplex? He posted one of his units on apartments.com Monday morning, had four showings Monday afternoon, got credit checks from apartments.com on Tuesday, and had chosen his tenant by Wednesday. And with recurring online rent payments, those dollars just hit your bank account every month. It's kind of amazing. So. Is there a headache involved with being a landlord? Yes, a little. But thanks to today's wealth of online tools, the process has never been easier. Okay, so if you've gotten this far, if you've purchased a duplex and placed a tenant in the other unit, you might start to fear reason number four not to house hack, dealing with tenants. If you've been a tenant, you know how good tenants have it. Air conditioning goes out, call the landlord. Toilet won't flush, call the landlord. When you house hack, you put yourself on the other side of the equation. Now you're the one getting the phone call in the middle of the night about a clogged toilet, and you're the one who has to fix the problem. And I bring up clogged toilets because this is specifically what most people fear, getting a call in the middle of the night to fix a broken toilet. This is exactly what your uncle, who doesn't own a yacht, will warn you about. But here's the reality, and I say this from my personal experience owning and living in single family homes from 2009 to 2019, and then a duplex from 2019 to the present. As soon as you purchase a home, and I'm talking about a regular house here, not a multifamily property, you become responsible for it and all its components. The refrigerator, the water heater, the furnace, the light switches, the plumbing, the roof. Not to scare you, but these are all components that from time to time, break. So as a first time homeowner, you quickly develop a little Rolodex of people you can call when problems arise. Within your first year of home ownership, you'll have in your phone the numbers of a decent handyman, a reliable plumber, an electrician, etc. Building out your Rolodex is like a rite of passage for a new homeowner. What I'm getting at is the big leap is from being a renter to being a homeowner. And then going from homeowner to landlord really isn't much further. Let me share my own experiences as a case in point. As a homeowner, I had to replace windows, replace a whole gas line, fix a clogged sink, fix several clogged toilets. My wife's doing, not mine, believe you me. Trap mice in the crawl space, cut down a limb of a tree that had fallen onto the cable line, fix broken light switches, fix broken outlets, and the list continues. Don't be too freaked out. This all went down over the course of a decade. And for almost all of these problems, I hired somebody to do the fixing. Flash forward to my house hacking days. And in the first year, my tenants had one issue with their washer dryer, two issues with their dishwasher, two doors that got sticky when the weather turned hot, and a problem with their gate key. And in each case, I called my handyman or the appliance repair place I had found, and the problem was solved in a day or two. So is it possible that your tenant calls you in the middle of the night because their toilet is overflowing? Sure, it's totally possible, but it's also possible your partner or spouse shakes you awake in the middle of the night because your toilet is overflowing. What's much more likely is that whether you own a house or a multifamily property, things will break from time to time and you'll have the responsibility of fixing them in a timely manner. There's really no get out of jail free card in either situation, but nor is there a boogeyman to fear in either situation. Okay, reason number five not to house hack. You have to live next door to your tenants. Now, this worry living next door to the person paying you rent is twofold. The first element of this is a worry about 
who you'll be renting to. And I have found this worry usually comes from a buyer who has some real estate investment experience or at least has been educating himself in real estate investing. And when you first get into real estate investing, you tend to focus on the bottom end of a given market, the less expensive properties in worse off neighborhoods that produce better cash flow. This is where most first time investors get their start. Of course, these lower quality properties will attract lower quality tenants. So it's understandable that somebody might think all tenants are lower quality. But if you're renting right now, you're a tenant. Are you lower quality? I see it like this. If you find a duplex that you wanna buy and live in, there's a very good chance that you'll find somebody very much like yourself who would like to live there too, as a renter. So to avoid lower quality tenants, avoid bad neighborhoods, avoid weird buildings, find a place where you'd enjoy living and you'll find a tenant much like yourself who will also enjoy living there. The other element of this worry has to do with your tenant knowing that you own the place. I think some people are worried that conflict will arise if the landlord isn't a faceless corporation, but is you, the guy or girl in the other unit. From my experience and in talking with my clients, I haven't seen this. A lot of this has to do with selecting the right tenant, and we'll talk about that in a second. But if you really don't want your tenant to know you own the building, tell your tenant you work for the owner of the building. I have a client, Pedro, who does this at his duplex in Long Beach. As far as his tenant knows, Pedro works for a guy who owns a lot of rentals in Long Beach. And while Pedro can relay requests and answer questions, everything is really up to the owner. All right, we've saved the best for last. Reason number six not to house hack, the possibility of evicting a tenant. Look, for any real estate investor, the worst case scenario is an eviction. It's stressful and it's expensive. So the first order of business is preventing an eviction in the first place. The most effective eviction prevention occurs when you select your tenant. Select wisely and you won't ever have to worry about evicting. Here's why. Firstly, Americans can be separated into two groups. Those who care about things like their credit score, and those who don't. Your first task when reviewing applications for your rental unit is to identify that first group. Key indicators include a good to great credit score, solid employment history, and solid recommendations from an employer and previous landlord. These are prerequisites for any tenant you consider for your property. And you wanna get a personal feel for your applicants. For house hackers, I strongly recommend showing your rental units yourself so you can get a sense for each applicant during the showing. What worked really well for me when showing my rental unit was being transparent about the situation. I explained that a young couple with a toddler, specifically my family, would be living upstairs and that we were hoping for an environment conducive to a toddler's sleep schedule. Some people heard this and understandably lost interest in the unit. And the several parties who did apply for the unit actually liked the idea of a quieter home front. In the end, I got awesome tenants who pay on time and honestly tolerate my daughter's occasional tantrums better than I do. Two more points surrounding this eviction topic. If paying rent becomes an issue, remember that you don't have to be the villain. The lease agreement is the villain. Make sure your lease lays out on what date each month rent is due, on what date a late fee, if any, will be applied, and on what date notice will be given if rent isn't paid in full and then stick to it. Legally, you're as contractually bound to the agreement as your tenant is. So lay everything out in the lease and make it clear from the start that you'll be executing what's in the lease. And lastly, the silver lining is that no bank is going to let you buy a property that you can't afford on your own. Even if you have to evict a tenant, you'll be able to cover the full mortgage payment yourself. The bank simply wouldn't have it any other way. In fact, one of my clients has had to evict a tenant. It sucked. It started with poor tenant screening. My clients should never have let this individual rent from them in the first place. The situation got contentious and no rental income was collected for several months. But eventually the situation resolved, a suitable tenant was found, and life continued. So I see evictions as being like car accidents. They're terrible, so you do everything in your power to avoid having one, but you still gotta drive if you wanna get anywhere. Subscribe for more videos about all things house hacking out every Tuesday.